Hi guys, welcome back to Scott Family Homestead. Even though it is summer right now, I'm going to do a quick review on our wood cook stove because we are moving out of this house and this is my last chance to do it. And I wanted to give some information, the pros, the cons, what we loved about it. This is the Lincar Regina wood cook stove. And we have it in the sandstone finish. So it's got this beautiful kind of sparkly side panels on it. First, I wanna talk about the pros to this. First of all, it is a beautiful stove. I get so many compliments on this. It is just gorgeous. It doesn't have that antique look, which I also love, but it has more of a modern farmhouse look. And second, it is UL certified, meaning your, your insurance company is gonna be a lot happier with one like this than one of the antique ones. They wanna see UL certified. Some insurances won't even cover you if you don't have a UL certified stove. That was a big game changer for us in choice. When we went to buy this cook stove, there were not very many UL certified at all. They are certifying more now, which is great. People have more options, but that was a huge part of why we chose this one. Number three, this firebox is much larger than the average wood cook stove. So when you look at wood cook stoves, a lot of the times they're gonna have a small firebox, which is fantastic if you are going to be burning in your kitchen. So in this house, this is a primary heat source, so it has a nice big firebox on it. Compared to a regular wood stove, this is a very small firebox. But for a wood cook stove, this is a nice large one, so it can be used to heat your home. Now over on this side, you have your oven. It has a thermometer on it in Celsius. I love this. You can put a 13 by 9 in there. You can double stack it. It's not a convection, but you can use it um, however you find is working for you. The top of this wood cook stove is cast iron. You're going to treat this just like a cast iron pan. So you can scrub this down. You're going to oil it, whatever your preference is, including all the cast iron rings. And then you're going to want to get a nice hot fire going in there and open your windows. Anytime that you are burning a new coating onto the top of this, it's going to smoke like crazy, just like a cast iron pan. You are going to want to oil this at the beginning of your season when you can have your windows open. You can cook on this like a cast iron pan. You can use any other type of pan on here. So we use stainless steel or we use our cast iron pans right on top of here. When you're cooking on the top here, depending on where you are compared to the firebox is gonna be how hot you're going to be cooking. So if you just want to have like a kettle on, you can see that's where we used to keep our kettle where it'd be a little bit cooler. Um, we used to keep a pot of water on here off to the side that would just put some moisture into the air. But if you're cooking something and you want it nice and hot, you wanna center it over the firebox and this this model has um, several different rings here. It comes with a tool that can be used to remove the rings when they are hot. So you just stick this in here. And you can remove as many rings as you want to put your pan on there if you want flames and fire directly below it. You can set your pan right on top there. It does get nice and hot on its own. All right, let's talk about the cons. The first one would be the fact that it's difficult to learn how to bake in one of these ovens. You're not gonna have this consistently 350 degrees the entire time that you're using it. And sometimes it's very difficult to even get it up to 350 degrees. It has a huge firebox. So by the time you get this thing up to 350 degrees, it's heating your house at a pretty good clip. So you need to plan out your meals. And I also found that this little thermometer does not work all that great. It's in Celsius, you have to convert it. And then it's on the door, which makes it a lot cooler than what it actually is in the back of the oven. I bought a hanging thermometer to put in there so that I could hang it in the middle and see what temperature it really was. And ultimately, I had to change how I cooked when I used this. A lot of times you're cooking stuff at a lower temperature than what your recipe calls for, and you have to maintain it and watch it and keep an eye on it. This fits a 9x13, but it also fits a Dutch oven really, really well. You can cook a roast in here or a whole chicken. Let it cook all day. Let it cook at a low setting. Maybe you don't even have to route the air around the oven because it's staying warm enough in there just with your firebox going. It is excellent for slow cooking, but if you want to roast something or broil something, 
you're gonna have to work for it. it you're gonna have to rotate your food in there because it's gonna be warmer in the back than it is in the front it just takes a little bit of learning which I think for some people is gonna be a con because it's gonna take some of your time I'm gonna have Ryan show you a little bit about the operation of the cook stove and how everything works and the airflow okay so the firebox is over here and the heat from the firebox will go up to where these rings are and then kind of channel it along the back here and this knob has a little flapper on it so when the knob is turned let's say counterclockwise that makes that uh, flap go this direction so all the air can go out and straight up the chimney when you turn it clockwise like this it goes like this and it will actually close off this pathway the air then comes this way forward and then down around the oven and then up the flue this way so there's three air adjustments on here uh, actually really only two there's primary air which is up here this is closed and this is open um, usually when you're getting the fire going you leave it all the way open this is your secondary airflow open is out closed is in and then this is the shaker for that side it'll shake all the coals and ashes down into this tray for cleanup you only want to run heat to this oven when you are using it or preheating it to use it. So what it does is it takes air from the firebox and circulates it around this oven. The air is much cooler going up the chimney after it has gone around the oven, which leads to more creosote buildup. So if you're using your oven a lot or if you are routing your air around the oven quite a bit, you're going to want to do extra cleaning have somebody come out and clean the flue or find a way to do it yourself. This one comes apart really easily and we were able to do it ourselves. Um, but you're gonna wanna do that at least once a year, more if you're using the oven more often. Let's talk accessories really quick. We've got one of these little fans. This fan works off of the heat of the stove so you don't need any batteries, you don't need any electric, and it pushes the air out into the room and the reason we like this is because this is a two-story great room and this little fan made it so that a lot of the warm air made it to us on the couch before it just went up into the eaves of the house. You have these bars on the side where you can hang your tools. I recommend getting some of these S hooks. These are really nice because you can hang your cast iron pans here. You can hang some oven mitts whatever you need. Those are a nice little accessory to have. So this is basically a safety glass, especially if you have kids, uh, you don't want them touching directly on this glass that's back. This safety glass gives you a little bit of distance between that really, really hot glass on the inside. You're also gonna want to get an ash bucket. When you put ashes into this, you're gonna wanna take it outside. Do not burn your house down. Just because you put a lid on it doesn't mean it's perfectly safe. So you're gonna want an ash bucket to clean out the cook stove every so often, but make sure you are utilizing the best safety with it. There's a book called Wood Cook Stove Cookery that I really enjoyed. I will link it in the description. It tells you a lot about wood cook stoves, how they work, how to find one, especially if you're looking for an antique one, what to look for, how to know if it's good quality or if it's gonna hold up. It's got recipes and ways to use your wood cook stove. And I think if you are thinking about getting a wood cook stove or if you've got an antique one in your home, it's a great book to read. So, Another con of this stove is that it doesn't really come with a manual that tells you how to use it. So I hope that this video is helpful in that respect. If you have a Regina wood cook stove and you are looking for some advice, uh, feel free to reach out at any time. We purchased our stove from woodcookstove.com and they were great. And I'm really happy with our experience with them. At the farm, we have an antique wood cook stove. So now that I've used a couple different types, I'm really getting the hang of the wood cook stove. I love it. I think it's a really fun way to cook. It's not the easiest and fastest, but it is very fun. And if you have any questions specifically about the Lincar Regina, or if you have any questions about wood cook stoves in general, feel free to leave a comment on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, Scott Family Homestead. Give us a follow. I would love to talk to you about all things homesteading, and I hope to see you in the next video.